Tons of diets out there recommend eating low glycemic index foods. But what exactly is the glycemic index? Let's science it. Hey, welcome to Nourishable, I'm Dr. Lara. The glycemic index, or GI, is a method used to rank foods based on how they impact your blood glucose. Does eating this apple make your blood sugar spike super high and super fast? Or is the rise more gradual? It was originally created to help people with diabetes select foods to improve their glycemic control by ranking foods as low, medium, or high GI. You can't just guess the GI of a food by looking at the food label. It has to be tested. In order to express the impact of a particular food, we need a reference to compare it to. And we want this reference to be something that has maximum spike potential. Enter the sugar drink. 50 grams of pure sucrose dissolved in water requires little digestion, so the glucose can be rapidly absorbed into the bloodstream. So I fasted for over 12 hours and I haven't had any physical activity this morning, and so now I can drink my pure sugar drink. And I'm using a continuous glucose monitor to measure my blood glucose every five minutes. Cheers. Oh my goodness, that's so sweet. Okay, and now I'm going to sit tight for two hours so we can see the impact on my blood glucose. So we see a pretty rapid spike in blood glucose. It looks like it peaks 45 minutes after the drink and then normalizes back to baseline around 75 minutes. So it's the next day and now we can do an experiment to find out the glycemic index of a particular test food. So I'm gonna test this uh, Dave's Killer Bread, the 21 whole grains and seed version, not an ad, just a fan. So we wanna compare like to like. And yesterday I drank a sugar beverage with 50 grams of sugar. So it's 50 grams of digestible carbohydrate. So today I'm going to eat a serving of bread that also gives me 50 grams of digestible carbohydrate. Now that word digestible is actually important because products like whole wheat breads and other fruits and vegetables, they also contain fiber, which is a carbohydrate, but we can't actually digest it. So when we're looking at the serving size that we want to eat to make sure we get 50 grams of digestible carbohydrate, we have to actually subtract the fiber from the total carbohydrates in the product. So when I look at the nutrition facts panel, what I see is one slice of bread has 22 grams of carbohydrates in it, but five of those grams are fiber. So I take 22 minus five to get 17 grams of digestible carbohydrate per slice. And so if I wanna get 50 grams total, then I need to eat almost three full slices of bread. Still not my typical breakfast, um, but here we go. Those killer seeds. In this graph, we see my blood glucose to the sugar drink in red and to the bread in blue. It's pretty striking how different they are over the two hours. The bread caused a much more gradual rise in blood glucose, and the peak was substantially lower compared to the sugar drink. Now to actually calculate the glycemic index, we need to calculate the area under the curve for both the sugar drink and the bread separately. Then we divide the bread test area by the sugar drink reference and multiply by 100 to express it as a percent. Using this method, the glycemic index for Dave's Killer Seed bread is 34, which puts it in the low GI category. From this N of 1 experiment, we observe that Dave's Killer Seed bread raises my blood glucose only 34% as much as the sugar drink over a two hour period. I was actually pretty surprised at how low the GI for this bread was. I definitely expected it to be lower than the sugar drink due to the fiber content, since fiber slows down the absorption of glucose but I really didn't think that it would be categorized as a low GI food because it's still bread. And the reality is it might not be. We can't exactly conclude that the GI of Dave's Killer Seed Bread is for sure 34 just from this experiment. Determining the GI of a food needs to be done in a larger sample of study participants than just me. And each participant needs to do the experiment in duplicate or triplicate, meaning drinking the sugar drink on three separate days and eating the test food on three separate days. Usually that sugar drink is made of pure glucose rather than the sucrose table sugar that I used. It also turns out that there's a few more complications about the glycemic index and its applicability. I dig into all of this in my video series on glycemic responses linked here. That's what science tastes like. Thanks for tuning into Nourishable. Check out all my references in the video description and be sure to subscribe to stay up to date on all things nutrition.